I've spoken extensively about my use of physical notebooks as commonplace books in my video from last year. If you don't know, commonplace books are a way to compile knowledge from books you read, media you consume, anything you want in a notebook to save and keep for later as a way of knowledge management, really. I really love and really enjoy writing by hand. However, I have compiled three things that I have struggled with keeping a commonplace book written by hand. The first thing is actually engaging with the material I'm taking notes on on a continual basis so that I understand it on a deeper level and actually make connections internalize them and create new ideas instead of just taking in information. The second thing is the archiving of information. I recently lost one of my planners, not commonplace books, but still. And ever since then, I've been thinking a lot about backing up my commonplace book notes. There's just such a benefit of backing up stuff digitally. And the third Thing was the linear structure of a notebook. Physical notebooks are by definition inherently linear. It's not so easy to connect different topics, especially not if the topics are in different notebooks written at different times in your life. One of the top comments on that previous video I made about commonplace books mentioned Zettelkasten and that has been floating around in my brain ever since. I've been inspired by the Zettelkasten system for my current Obsidian note-taking workflow because it focuses so much on that step after collecting information. So why did I choose Obsidian? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, Obsidian is offline first, so your notes are not stored in the cloud. Instead, they are stored locally on your computer and you can easily access them just as any folder on your computer. Next, the program uses markdown files, which are pretty future proof as far as digital files go, because it's not a proprietary file type. So you can open it with any markdown reader or even as plain text. It's also very customizable. This can be both a pro and a con. You can make it really simple or as fancy as you want with automated data view stuff, a hundred plugins, but you don't have to do any of that. The program is also free. Obsidian does offer paid syncing options between devices, but they don't block you from other types of syncing. I mostly use it on my computer, but if I want to look at some information on my phone, it's there for me if I need it. But by far the biggest reason why I chose Obsidian is that it focuses a lot on internal linking. Instead of focusing on this hierarchical folder structure that you see with a lot of note-taking applications, a folder structure is inherently binary, kind of like that linear system in my commonplace book that I talked about. A note can only exist in one place at a time even though it might fit in many different places. This type of organization has never really made a ton of sense in my brain. So that's one of the reasons why I like this internal linking structure so much. Internal linking is more like a personal Wikipedia, not unlike your commonplace book being your personal encyclopedia, right? It's just more easily searchable. In fact, if I had to point towards an analog system that did something similar to this wiki-like structure, it would be the Zettelkasten system. I can't go super deeply into what Zettelkasten is here. However, I have written this video in such a way that I think you could still follow along, even if you're kind of unfamiliar with the topic. I do recommend watching this video if you want to know all about the ins and outs of Zettelkasten. So this is how I apply Zettelkasten non-rigidly in my own personal system. So there's three types of notes. The first one is the fleeting notes. In my personal system, the fleeting note only exists as a daily note. I don't write any of my tasks or anything like that in that daily note because I use a paper planner for that. Instead, my daily note kind of looks like a rapid logging in a bullet journal, really. I write down what I did, what I felt, anything I want to research further, reminders for myself, anything that I want to expand on, anything that I think deserves its own note. Periodically kind of go through them and expand on anything that I want to expand on. I've recently been using the calendar plugin to easily click from daily note to daily note, and that's honestly been working great for me. And these notes are really my scratch pad, I would say. Then the next way I take notes in my system is the literature note. This will also be a familiar concept if you've heard of Zettelkasten or even commonplace books. 
These are notes that are things like highlights from articles, books, videos, podcasts, anything that isn't in your own words, like a commonplace book. You can write down anything that you find engaging or explore something that you want to expand on. Both fleeting notes and literature notes can turn into what I call evergreen notes. Evergreen notes are notes that you write in your own words based on fleeting notes and literature notes you've taken. This is the integral step that I really wanted to focus on after writing down information from other sources. It's the difference between saving information for the sake of it and actually doing something with it. The term in the Zettelkasten system is permanent notes, but I just prefer the term evergreen, which was coined, I believe, by Andy Matyshak. Sorry if I am butchering your name, Andy. They differ in a few ways, and I will leave a link to his notes about evergreen notes down below. They are notes that you can continuously update as to remain evergreen. But really, it's a personal preference, whatever you want to call this type of notes. My favorite way of thinking of these types of notes is to write them as if you're explaining something to your future self. I like to write these notes honestly on paper first, which is one of the ways I've still been using my paper commonplace book because I prefer thinking away from the screen and thinking with my own brain instead of looking up opinions and stuff from people online. If I am writing an evergreen note, I should have all the information that I need available to me in my Obsidian Vault anyway. The goal for evergreen notes is to be atomic, which means that they should be short and oriented towards one topic or idea, as opposed to being really long and dense. This makes them easier to link in different places because the note can be useful in many different contexts. To write these, you need to take a step back from the literature notes and view the bigger picture. Andy recommends starting with a broad note for each big idea and then writing smaller, more atomic notes, which capture the more atomic ideas within that cluster. And these notes should be as densely linked to other places in your vault as possible. So that, honestly, in a nutshell, is how I take notes and the different steps for me. This helps me to think deeper about the notes I'm taking. And now let's talk about how I organize this big mess of words and links. I've already talked about struggling with rigid folder structure at the beginning of this video, but I definitely think folders have their place sometimes. I mean, they have been a paradigm of organization, both digital and analog, for a long time and for good reason. It just doesn't fit my particular use case and my particular brain, I think. Instead, I really like to use indexes. An index is just a list of links with notes that all fit within a broader topic. They're sometimes also called mocks or MOCs, maps of content, popularized by the YouTuber Nick Milo. I have two reasons why I like them so much. One, because I can link notes in numerous different categories. Another example I could give you is my song index, which is a page with links to all of my guitar tabs. Some of these are just links to other notes in my Obsidian Vault, but some of these I have purchased from people that have written these tabs, and usually when you purchase tabs, they are written in a PDF format. What I do then is I put them in my Google Drive and I make a link to this external source within the notes in Obsidian. You can also save PDFs in Obsidian, by the way, but I've chosen to do it this way just to keep the size of my vaults as small as possible. I really like having links to external sources and links to my internal notes all on the same page. I do use a homepage with the homepage plugin, which has all of my largest indexes in it. Any note that I may want to navigate to quickly, any projects I'm currently working on, my goal really is to have every note in my vault findable from this homepage, not unlike how you can click from page to page to page in a wiki. My homepage really is my entry point into my vault. And as you can see from the graph view, most of my notes link in some way back to my homepage. By the way, just a side note, but clicking on notes is definitely not how I navigate all of the time. When I know specifically what I'm looking for, I mostly use the quick switcher to navigate to that note quickly. I just type in what I'm looking for. But the link building and indexing has been integral to me for finding notes that I may have forgotten about or for creating connections where I previously didn't think there were any. So as you've probably seen in my sidebar, I do use folders sometimes. I'm not completely anti-folder, I promise. So the folders I have are an attachment folder for all the pictures and attachments, naturally. 
a capture folder. This is where I keep my literature notes, or as I like to call them, captures, based on media type. My daily notes folder, which is a dump for my daily notes. Omnivore. Omnivore is an open source read later app that, that is integrated with Obsidian via a plugin. Whenever I highlight something in Omnivore, mostly articles, I will import these with the Omnivore plugin to Obsidian and then resort them in my capture folder. So this folder should be empty because it's really just an inbox to see what comes in through Omnivore. The resources folder, this is where I keep a list of my index notes and templates. I have some really simple templates saved for podcasts, quotes, articles, and my daily notes, just to save a bit of time. And then the biggest folder by far is my notes folder. This is where I dump the vast majority of my notes. Basically anything that doesn't fit in any of the previous categories, which is honestly most of my notes, goes in here. The last organizational tool in Obsidian that I wanna talk about is tags. I don't have a lot of them, but I do use them sometimes. I have really scaled back my usage of tags in Obsidian because once you start to tag stuff willy-nilly, for me, it becomes really hard to stop because <laughs> you can infinitely add more tags about more different things, categories and subcategories and sub subcategories. It becomes really easy to be overwhelmed by tags. And so I've been trying to minimize them. I mostly use tags as a status marker. My most useful tags are hashtag empty, which is for notes that I've created, usually while writing something else but I've not yet had the time to go back to and write about. So I know I need to revisit them, just like I have to do with the hashtag unfinished tag. It's very similar, but it's for notes that I've added some text to, but that I need to flesh out more. I also use hashtag reminder. I already mentioned it, I think, but I will periodically scroll through it and just see where I've used hashtag reminder, usually in my daily notes, and see if there's anything I need to revisit or anything that I've forgotten about. I also use a hashtag for my daily notes just to group all of my daily notes together so I don't end up with a ton of orphans in my graph. And then I also have a capture tag and then a couple of sub tags. I try to tag every literature note with a category so I can keep track of where I capture from the most and where I capture from the least, especially if I compare it to time spent. Let's say if I spend a lot of time on Reddit, but I never capture anything from Reddit, maybe I should not be on there as much as I've been, for example. I really did it just to get some insights into where I get my most valuable information, which unsurprisingly have been articles and books, I think. So that's really my Obsidian note-taking workflow for creating notes in a way that deepens my connection of the media I consume, the books I read, and the things I want to learn about. I often hyper-focus on specific subjects for a period of time, and taking notes on those things, making connections, and deepening my understanding makes me feel like that knowledge isn't lost as soon as my hyper-focus wanes and I move on to something else. Instead, it actually goes somewhere and it can continue to stay relevant in my life. As for my commonplace book, I still love writing by hand even though I'm using this digital system now. I do still catch myself writing by hand, although not as much copying the text from a book, but I will often start writing a permanent note by hand, just as a way to throw my thoughts on the paper in a messy way, because honestly, I find it really hard to be messy and unorganized in a digital space. I find paper much more suitable for that. I also still take physical notes and highlight the books that I read, and I write in the margins. Not my nice expensive books or books that aren't mine, of course, but I really enjoy this as a way of getting away from the screen and getting that feeling of being in a conversation with the author that I've spoken about before. I think my next project is going to be digitizing my commonplace book so I have a backup of my physical notebooks. I hope you found this video helpful at all. Please let me know if there's any questions or follow-up videos you want to see about Obsidian after this one. Feel free to take away anything you want from this video and discard anything that doesn't really fit your brain because everybody's system is going to look a little bit different because we're all a little bit different. Anyway, Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you very soon. Bye.